All right, guys, so here we are in the session, and I just wanted to show you guys what a lot of trimmed guitar parts look like. And if you could look over here, you see that they're cut on the grid. Some people prefer to fade in, some people don't. I am coming from the school of if you don't hear any audible clicks and it sounds natural, it's okay. But some people have, you know, preferences. Like some people would want to throw this in slip mode and fade this in right here and... You know, it doesn't really make that much of a difference when there's a lot of stuff happening in the mix. So, first step to trimming your clips is make sure that your tempo is correct. So, if we look up here where the uh, tempo bar is, our tempo is 107. And the grid will align itself to match up to 107 beats per minute. Now, when you're trimming clips, you also have to be careful to make sure it all sounds natural. But that's that's going to come in just a few. So... Uh, you want to make sure that everything you're recording is A-OK. -okay. So let's just hear how this sounds real quick. That sounds cool. Um, sounds really cool. I like it. Um, but if you notice here, everything's in chunks. Everything's kind of cut and neat. And that goes for many other tracks I have amongst the session and you could just take a look at it right here whoops there you go make it a little smaller you see all these clips here that are just trimmed they're nice and neat some are duplicated some are just recorded in a certain way and um, you know with the exception of guitar solos or any other solo parts that need that natural introduction or that natural like jump into the part I leave it like you could tell right here I left the tail of one clip here and you know, the tails of this clip and that clip there. So, you know, it really is up to you to figure it out, to figure out how you want your clips to be trimmed, but it's important that they're trimmed because you can just arrange things. And the second thing I want you guys to take a look at is up here where my markers are in Pro Tools, I have all my location markers. And if you notice, I really don't name them. And that's mainly because I like to keep the numbers there. So I know that location one is one, two, three, and so on and so forth. And the way you jump to that in Pro Tools is on your numeric pad, you press period. Let's just put a number two, period, and now I'm at location two. You take a look over here, you'll see my cursor has moved to location two. And the reason this is convenient, because let's say you want to listen to something at the end chorus real quick, right? Period. 7 period. That's my last location marker in the session, and this takes me to the end of the song. And now I can listen to it. And the cool thing is if you just leave it playing and you jump to your location, it'll automatically play that location. So let's just play this again here. And let's say now I want to go to location 5. Now I just jumped from location 7 to 5. Now I want to go to location 1, which is after the introduction, which is the beginning of the song. This is really handy to have set up because you know where things are. You can hear things. Like, for instance, I know that I see some clips over here by location 4. Maybe that might be some extra guitar parts. Let's jump over there and listen to that. So now you know that when you use location markers, you can kind of keep your session nice and tidy. You can just jump to whatever part of the song. And the best part is I didn't even need a mouse. So look, two, three, four, five. Um, and I'm using Windows, as you can tell. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that the a lot of these commands translate over to Apple for a lot of you Apple users out there. But this is a Windows tutorial, sorry. So the last thing I want to show you guys is a copy pasta trick that I actually learned in school. So I have a part here that's missing. It's completely gray. I'll just make that a little bit bigger so it's easier to see and edit. And you see that it's grayed out over here and it's missing something. Let's just wait here what that sounds like. 
I'm missing the complete left side of my guitars. So what I can do, since this riff over here, the grayed out riff, is the same as this riff here, I want to move it over. Now, for a lot of people, you're going to probably just drag it over and rely on grid mode. And no, 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 we don't want to do that. There's an easier way to do this. And I'm going to show you. You choose your selector tool, your highlighting tool, which brings up this eye cursor. And you're going to click at the end of the clip right over here, right? Now, this is a tricky command because if you don't hold down the Alt key, it won't duplicate it. Alt is kind of like your global duplicate key in Pro Tools. So what you're going to want to do is hit F8 or your grabber tool up here. You're going to hold down Windows and Alt. And you're going to click. And now your part has just magically appeared over here. Now, of course, there's some editing to do over here and to make sure everything sounds right. But you guys get the gist of what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to duplicate something to move from here to here without dragging it across. And I've worked with so many producers and so many different genres of music, whether it be, you know, metal or rock or hip hop. I've just seen so many people just keep dragging their clips all along the timeline. And it's just really frustrating because with one click or two clicks and like holding down two keys you're already copy pasted something over there and you can do this for anything and for for any any audio any kind of genre of music that's like being played nowadays if you play pop or if you play rock or if you play hip-hop you know most of the songs have a structure and if once you find your structure you can just start copying pasting things if i wanted to throw this clip over here let's highlight this clip if i want to just throw it at the end of the session for whatever reason i could just boom highlight this bar right here this is bar 121 and again highlight my grabber tool hold down windows and alt and just click and now i could move my you know clip for to where that cursor was last and it's really like a game changer because if you're on a time crunch you have a project due or you have a lot of copying and pasting to do this is the best way to do it and location markers help you go into your session a lot easier they help you bounce around your session a lot easier and yeah that's this is basically what I do for my Pro Tools session this is pretty much how I set up every single Pro Tools session and I mean, of course, every session is going to be different. You're not going to want to set up the same type of template, but you also want locations, markers, and places where you know you're going to need them. And the easiest way to create a location marker is to, A, select a location. Let's say bar 85. Bar 85. I want to put a location marker here. Now what you're going to do is press enter on your numeric keypad. You're going to press the enter right here. It's going to ask you, will you want to name it, the number of the location, your marker selection, bar beats, and you could also have properties on that location. You could have track heights on that location. Let's say that's a really tricky part to like really edit. You, know, you can click all these different things, and you could have your location just set up immediately. But I like to keep it simple, and I just keep my track views all the same and everything the same. It makes things less complicated because next thing you know, you're always switching up views. And uh, yeah, basically that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little tutorial. Um, I hope these tips help you to create faster and to move around your Pro Tools sessions a lot easier. Because it's always going to be frustrating to watch somebody click around with a mouse when you know right there. I can go to the part after the guitar part over here. Whoops. I want to hear this part right here, the guitar dressings. That is location two. I also want to hear these two guitar parts. That's at location four. Period for period. My cursor bounces over there and just hit play. Now I want to hear the ending of the song, where all these clips are. 
I want to hear all this stuff together, and I want to hear what that sounds like. Period 7 period. My cursor bounces over to location 7, and I just hit play. It's that easy. And once you have your session set up like this, you'll also be able to bounce around between all different sections of the So guys, like I said before, I hope this helps you and I hope this brings you at least some solace knowing that if you're a beginner producer or if you're someone who's just getting into Pro Tools that you don't have to rely on other engineers or other people who say they're engineers to help you make your music. I mean, everyone's making music at home, especially now. And it's really good to know just a couple of tips and tricks to help you get started and to get moving really fast. So if it helps, let me know. Uh, click the subscribe button, click the like button, let me know what you think, and I'll be having some more Pro Tools tutorials coming your way soon. Thanks, guys.